I'm going to turn this into this in 27 minutes or less. Will I finish in time? Or will I have to hit the turbo button? You can create along with me or just relax and watch. I'm Gina Murrow, the 27 minute artist. Today's project starts out messy and ends up adorable. I take charcoal powder, cover the surface, and then using a subtraction method, I pull the bunny out of the dark. Here are the supplies you'll need. Drawing paper, charcoal pencil, charcoal stick, charcoal powder, light pink soft pastel, a peach soft pastel, kneaded eraser, a stub of rolled paper, also known as a tortilla, an electric eraser, or if you don't have that, a white rectangular eraser, an old round watercolor brush, and I used an old number eight that was bushy at the ends, and a cheap makeup brush you can buy at the dollar store. Okay, let's hop on down to the studio and have some fun. Let's start this charcoal drawing of the bunny with a charcoal pencil. Not quite as messy, but we'll get to the mess in a minute. And this has a little more control. We're gonna mark just a little bit where we're gonna put the top of that tallest ear and a little bit of the next ear. We'll come back to those. Working on getting the shape. If I'm not careful, this bunny will look like a chinchilla. If you're doing his eyes, they're nice and big, but you can also do them with straight lines and it will look more like an animal eye. Makes for a stronger picture. It's a little big. A little bit of his eye on the other side that you see there. Okay, so from here to here, that's the top of his nose. My stigmatism sometimes gets in the way, so I have to take into account that I may be seeing this a little bit off and adjust accordingly. Now, Painting with charcoal is just tons of fun. It's messy, yes, but it, it's really easy to make subtle changes in value. You're only dealing with one value, black, black and gray, or you know, one color, I'm sorry. And so it helps you see your values a little easier. It's really good practice. You can fix and probably should fix your finished painting with fixative. Um, right now I've got some Windsor Newton fixative. A lot of people use Sennelier's fixative. Um, they're all good. I don't advise you using hairspray. It's not archival. And you will end up having just a sticky mess. But if you're traveling or something and you don't really have anything else but hairspray, that's better than letting charcoal get all over your suitcase. Okay, so right now we're just kind of putting in the strong, the strong marks, shadows of where we have our bunny to make the shape of his face, his adorable little bunny face. And then he's, his neck is almost straight under here. There we go. We'll darken it up a little bit. The dark space between his cute little legs. Front legs is all we can see. His back legs are hidden by the grass. That's going to be at that angle. Okay. And I don't know what the plants are in the front. So we're just going to give him some kind of... Um, triangle-shaped clover to eat. This kind of clover is usually man-planted, and who knows? Out in this backyard in my Arizona house, this may well have been planted by somebody before me. Okay? Okay. 
Okay, once you get in the basic shapes of what you want and where you want them, we're gonna do the fun part. If you end up needing to sharpen your pencil, I highly recommend using a hand sharpener. Just stay away from electric sharpeners. See, it breaks off even with the hand sharpener. And to save time, we're gonna switch to our charcoal stick. Same stuff, it just doesn't have the wood on the outside to stop it, take a smaller piece. These little desert bunnies have a lot of striations on them to make them easy to hide in the dapple shade that is so prevalent in the desert. Okay. Now we have the basic shapes in. We're gonna put a whole lot more in, but now you know kind of where we're headed. I think his neck here needs to come up just a little bit more. Yeah, that looks more real. Now for the fun part. You take a, a dollar store makeup brush, and this is charcoal powder that I ordered online. It's not expensive, less than 10 bucks I think this was. You dip your powder brush in it, and you start adding shading all over it. Don't worry, you're not trying to stay in the lines though you can. Keep the darker part away from the lighter parts of the bunny. And you'll notice powder going every which way. Some people avoid doing this in the house. I'm not such a worried word about getting messy. Just silence that inner housemaid inside of you and tell it to be quiet for a little while because we're playing and we're having fun. I am going to keep the powder out of that near ear because I'm going to do something different with that here shortly. But anywhere that I want it a little darker, I can even scoop it along that trough that I've made. This trough, I used glassine paper to catch the worst of the dust. You could use wax paper, foil, uh, folded up cardstock. Just any number of stuff. I'll gather the leftover powder and pour it back into here when I'm done. Let's see, let's get under his chin there. Okay. Now, take a kneaded eraser, and these are those gray erasers. They can be red or blue as well. I've even seen yellow. Um, and you clean them by pulling and stretching like silly putty. Then you can stretch the eraser into a point or a piece that you need to make. And I actually, looking at it, I think my rabbit needs to be a little darker right in this area. So you get a full effect for what we're getting ready to do. I'm brushing with that makeup brush again. There we go. I don't think there's as much difference in value between him and the grass there. My kneaded eraser is in a point and I'm going to rub it where I want it to go white. And I'm by subtracting, I'm going to keep drawing. Cleaning often and cleaning you fold over the, the eraser. This charcoal is um, the kind of stuff that really it sticks to the eraser fast so just keep rolling and pulling it out hmm. without putting any more powder on my brush I'm gonna add just a little bit more to the edges of that ear okay and maybe a little bit more up there So you're just pulling and pushing, pulling and pushing, taking it back, making the eraser go kind of in the shape of the hair, the direction I want the hair to go. If I dab it, I can get a little bit lighter look without taking off quite as much charcoal. So I get more of a gray. Hmm. 
Okay. If I take off too much, I just put it back on with either the charcoal sticks, with the brush. And like, I, there's not enough darkness there. So I'm gonna take a charcoal stick, rub it in just a little bit. Okay, I'm doing great on time, so I don't have to feel like I have to hurry too much. And we're gonna darken his nose, especially at the base of his nose. And then a little bit in his eye. Now, one thing I'm noticing is when I put this paper on there, I put up the side that has uh, more texture. It's not a disaster. I usually prefer to paint on the smoother side, but we'll just work this texture into our bunny. That's a matter of preference. It's not a right or wrong. Get some of the shading and some of that dark part of the ear. So get that little darker value. This is looking a little pale, as is down here with the bunny. Because it's fur, I don't want to be too exacting here. Get a little bit fluffy with your scratching, so it has a little more of a furry look. Let's see if we can add some, not a straight line, but just kind of a shadow there for under his chin. I'm moving his legs over a little from where I drew him to begin with. Okay, then you can take something called a tortillion. It's just rolled up paper, but it's nice and hard. It has a rag content that's high. So when you rub with it, it holds up. You could take a paper towel or a small cloth wrapped around a pencil or at the end of a paintbrush and get a similar effect. So if you didn't go buy any of these, it's not a big deal. There's ways to work around it. Let's get this part in. Let's see, part of his ear that comes down in his body. And you notice when I rub it, I could do this with my fingers too. But rubbing it with a tortillion gives me a little bit more firm, I'm sorry, not firm, smooth look. And I can take this brush, like putting on blush. Except my bunny needs to blush dark. Okay. And I use this to press it into the paper so it'll stay a little better. And then I get enough charcoal on this tortillion I can kind of draw with that. See, it makes almost like a softer pencil. Now I don't like how this has kind of gotten... Yeah, there we go. I marked out those marks a little bit. Now I am going to take a clean finger and just smooth the sky or the, the distant grass is really what this is in a little softer. I'm keeping, keeping that a little more even just because I want it to not compete with my rather highly textured bunny. See how much fun this is? Pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling. Now I go back to the charcoal stick. I'm going to put in a few grass marks, just a little bit. And a little bit of shadowing under these shamrocks. And when I come back into the shamrocks with the eraser and pull them out, you'll see why I'm darkening this section. Just to focus less on this corner and more on what the bunny is eating. Well, let's give him some grass here. You don't have to do every grass stroke, 
but a few clumps kind of indicate where he is and what's going on. I can do a light little shamrock that I won't highlight there just to kind of set the scene. Go back to my eraser, make sure I have a nice relatively clean spot and I'm going to wipe the worst of it off my hands. And I'm just going to push and pull off. And I don't want it to be too, too bright and that's a little bright. So I didn't clean the eraser. I left it messy so that I could get more of a gray. Now I'll take a little tortillion and just tamp down where it got too white. Push and pull, push and pull. I can use this too to get some different types of grass back there. I'm pushing, let's see, take that eye down just a little bit. I'm just doing grass shapes through the more mellow part, the solid part of the grass, just to add some different colors. Now I think this part of the bunny needs a little bit of definition. I've gotten the dark a little too far up. So rubbing lightly with my eraser, I'm going to pull some of this out. And I'm going to come on around. I'm leaving my eraser dirty so it's not pulling it all white. Kind of pulled out too much. And ebb and flow, ebb and flow. I've got plenty of time. The nice thing about doing this kind of art is you have a lot of leeway for mistakes that could easily be fixed. So it makes it really relaxing. Charcoal's not expensive, which makes it even more fun to use because you feel like you can use it a lot a lot more freely if you're not worried about the cost. I have a lot of pastels and a lot of um, oil paints and things like that, but they're expensive. And sometimes I find myself being hyper careful because I have to pay for it. But with charcoal, feel free to create. Oops, too much. Well, if I'm having trouble with this kneaded eraser, I can take this electric eraser. Now you don't have to have one of these, but it just is fun to use. And they're not overly expensive. You said you have to be, they, they skip around in your hand. So you need to be confident with your motions. There we go. Look at that little guy. Whoops. Okay, so that got a little bit fuzzy unshaky. So I take my charcoal covered tortillion, put the charcoal back on and do that again. Let's come around. And a little bit, barely touching, it can take off just a little. The sun shines hitting him. Whoops. See, even the 27 minute artist takes, has to do it over and over again. Let's put a little bit of more sunshine along that cheek. Mm, that last one was a little bit much. Ebb and flow, ebb and flow. Okay. Now I don't want as much as the electric's gonna take off, but I think he does need a little more of the lightning back here. These little guys are coyotes favorite breakfast, so they have to be quick and they have to be good at hiding. And they are. They come and have breakfast in our backyard often. It's fun to see them. There's a little bit more. Oh, 
Again, if you get too much, leaving your eraser to get a little dirty gives you a different color. Using your finger can change the look. Cleaning your eraser can let you take off a little more. Light touch takes off less. Rough touch goes all the way back to white or near white. Okay, he's looking pretty good. I've got seven and a half minutes left, so being cautious not to overwork this, let's put a little more grass in. Now I can, let's try a different brush and just see what happens. This is just an old watercolor brush and it's really smooth and fluffy and I have not dipped it in the charcoal. So what it does is it lets me make this smoother in the background, which helps the grass stand out. You want texture in your painting. You want it to be a little bit um, have this furry look, but you don't want it so much so that it competes all around. You got to have a place for your eye to rest. So I have to be careful down here that I don't get too crazy with my taking it off. I think his ear there could use a little bit more help. This needs to be a little straighter. Got a little too much off. Tortillion to the rescue. There we go. And that needs to be, there's a nice dark line under the, where the sun hits his ear. is really fun to use. I think it cost me about $20 if I remember right. Now I'm going to take a couple of colors of pastel. You could use colored pencil. You could even use crayon. And this darker pink I'm going to put a little bit down here and a little along there. And then this lighter peach color. Get some of it on the upper part of the ear. Just a little. Then now, making sure that I've got at least one finger fairly clean, I'm going to do a little gentle rubbing, clean it off, pushing it hard into the paper. Try and only do enough that it, it, I don't have to get it super smooth. I just want the pink of the ear to touch out. And you know what? He doesn't have a pink nose in the picture, but I'm going to put just a hint of pink where I think his nostril will be. Whenever you look at a painting, your eye automatically, if it finds a color, it looks for that color elsewhere in the painting, always. And that's one reason some of the modern artists in the 20th century, well, I saw a very famous painting that was in the museum in Canberra, Australia, the National Museum of Australia. And it's a big white canvas with one red circle, one little red circle about this big. And what made that painting unusual and worth millions, even though it's super simple, is it, he was the first one to basically illustrate that idea. Your eye automatically looks for that color elsewhere and it isn't anywhere else. The red dot is it. Everything else is white. And that made it, made it millions famous. Now nobody else can do it because it's kind of a one trick pony, but the rest of us make sure that the color is somewhere else. There we go. Hmm. I keep getting that not quite right. Let me, there we go. Three minutes to go. And you can just kind of keep tweaking, getting it just right. 
I like his little white mustache. There is a lighter path between his eye and his nose. So I'm just going to press it. And then the white uh, right by his eye is really definitive. So let's get it with this. Mm -hmm. Nice. I don't know if his name is Peter. We can name him something else. Something a little more Arizona. Cowboy name. Okay. I think he's done. It's a good place to stop. It's a great exercise to do. You can do any kind of things in charcoal. And we're going to experiment some more with this because it is such a great way to practice your values, practice your drawing, and have some fun and even get away with making a little bit of a mess. Would you like to see a preview of our next episode? Keep watching. It's coming in just 40 seconds. But first, here are a few things you can do to help me keep the videos coming. Hit the subscribe button below and leave a comment while you're there. Share this video on your social media or share it with a friend. You can go to my website where you'll find more painting tips and you can buy the paintings I've created in these episodes. You can also see my fine art originals that took me way more than 27 minutes to create. Book me as a guest artist for your next gathering or convention. I do live painting demos and paint alongs for groups of every size, either in person or via Zoom. Next time on 27 Minute Artist, we're going to use colored pencils to bring this friendly golden retriever to life. See you then. See you next time. See you whenever you turn on my videos. <laughs>